Hi, I'm Inside Energy reporter Jordan Werfsbrock. This is an example of how an average American is invested in oil and gas companies. I am the average American of the day. I'm Dan Boyce. I'm also a reporter for Inside Energy. The fund is mine, a Roth IRA from T. Rowe Price. Dan has set a goal of retiring in 2055. Ambitious. It's an ambitious goal. Yes. <laughs> His fund has a stock ticker just like you would see from Apple or Google or Walmart or whatever. And the fund is required to report publicly to the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, exactly what it is invested in. And within that big fund, my money is split among 19 different smaller funds. For example, international growth, high yield, or just mirroring the stock market. They have their own stock tickers and also have to file regularly with the SEC. Roughly 90% of this fund is invested in stocks or equity of publicly traded companies, which means T. Rowe Price is a shareholder. And then roughly 10% is invested in bonds. Another way to say that you own part of somebody's debt, a company or a country, etc. Bonds tend to be less risky than stock. And as we get closer to 2055, my fund will switch over to more of these safer bonds. By looking at those filings, which list every company and entity the fund invests in, we can tell what portion of those funds are directly supporting oil and gas companies. It's anywhere between 0 and 18%. Putting the pieces back together, roughly 6% of this T. Rowe Price retirement account is directly invested in oil and gas companies. If you have a retirement account, like an IRA or a 401k or a 403b or a state pension, your makeup of oil and gas investments probably looks very similar to this, somewhere between 5 and 10%. When you add that up across the tens of millions of American households with retirement accounts, that's a lot of money. In fact, the American Petroleum Institute says about 70% of U.S. oil company worth is owned by us through our retirement accounts and mutual funds.